This is my bow. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Without my bow, I am nothing. Without me, my bow is nothing. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. So after we left Charles and Hutton Apple, that was day three for the group that was already over at Swartburg. They went out to Swartburg, which is South George, the mountains outside of George. And uh, we stayed out of the lodge there, it was a beautiful area. And first thing we did is I jumped in the truck with Joe and went out and hunted for a sable. We jump out and go out to the base of the mountains and we start looking around with our binoculars and we see the sable antelope up on the hill. And we use the mountains to our advantage. We get behind some hills, we walk some little valleys and some ridges and we get within about 100 yards, we see them, we get a little bit closer, jump up, we see them, we get to about 75 yards and we peek our heads up and boom, he busts us. Those guys can see really well. 105 yards, we are close. Okay, we must try and move on our pumps now. Okay. Can you do that move? Yes. We do the same thing we did before, we drop down, get behind some more hills, we walk around the hills, we come up, we get the wind right, we get ourselves right, we get the contour of the mountain right, we get to about 80 yards and he picks us off again. It's like he knows we're there. He's got a sixth sense to look over there. Can't smell us, but he knows we're there. So he runs off again, and this goes on all freaking day. So we're out there four and a half, five, six hours, and uh, I'm ready to go home. And I was like, Joe, I think he beat us for the day. And Joe's like, nope, we're not defeated yet. He says, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk right at him. Just get in line with me. We're gonna walk right toward him, but we're not gonna look at him. So get ready. He goes, okay, we're at 50 yards. So I draw back, take a couple more steps, I stop, and I shoot. Get them. Little back. It's a great shot. He runs off and beds down underneath a tree by a ravine. So we see blood, we're tracking blood. We get up on the hill, we see him down bedded underneath a tree. Tripp and Heath come up the hill. They just shot one too. They're all excited, they're pumped. They've got it in the back of the truck. So we've got the blood trekking dog. We've got me and Joe, we've got Heath and Tripp and their guide. And we decided to uh, sneak up and get about 80 or 90 yards away. And he starts to move around a little bit like he's not quite expired yet. So we go ahead and put him out of his misery with a rifle. And we definitely don't want him to suffer and we don't want him to fall down in this ravine because if he goes down there, we're gonna have to wait till the morning to come back because it's already starting to get dark and there's hyenas, jackals, and uh, all kinds of crazy mean animals out there in South Africa. So we put them out, go pick them up, and that finished my day one there, day three for everybody else. What an awesome day. Justin and I went out in the afternoon of day four, and uh, I, I wanted to pretend like I was a cameraman for him on his hunt, and he wanted to go harvest a trophy gems box. So day five out there is our last day. We gotta leave at lunch. So we go down looking for Inyala, and there's this big, beautiful, to me, this big, beautiful Inyala. And they say you can tell how old an Inyala is by the white on the tips of their antlers or horns. Again, it's, a, it's an antelope, so it's got a horn. And this thing has about two inches of white on there. And I'm saying, man, that thing's beautiful. And it's about 35, 40 yards. We stopped and we're in the truck and we're talking. And Joe goes, man, that thing's old. Let's, let's just go look for more. So we take off, we go down the river bottom and we find this nice big buck. He's young, two or three year old. And as soon as we start walking around to get a good shot on him, he runs off. And we come around this corner where a bunch of giraffe are eating. And there's a little Inyala eating underneath the giraffe. So we stop and we start to sneak around the corner and the, the giraffe spook off the Inyala and he runs and he stops in the brush. And Joe says, he's at 40 yards. So I take a shot, and again, I got another tree. I think I probably killed more trees in Africa than I did animals. We take off again from there. We come down this little valley, and we find another one, and we can't get close to him. We track him to about 50 yards, and then we sneak around, and we come up over the hill, and he busts us, and he runs off. And so I'm like, okay, well, let's just go back. It's time to go. It's like 11, 11.30. And we, we go back, and we're headed back to the, to the lodge, and the group coming away from the lodge says, hey, we got another hour, let's go hunt. So Joe and I say, okay, let's do one more pass through the river valley and see if we can find a Niala. So we get back down in there 
And this nice, beautiful buck comes walking out and we stop, we're on a hill. So I didn't even get out of the truck and I just let it fly. I thought I had him perfect at 20 yards and he walked right into a tree. I didn't pay attention, I got another tree. So I think that's tree three or four in this trip that's dead. And he goes, why'd you shoot then? I was like, I didn't want him to get away. He goes, he was gonna walk right into the opening. I was like, I'm sorry, Joe. Put my bow up and I'm sitting back there just pouting. We're heading back around the corner and I see this big, beautiful Inyala and I tap on top of the truck and I say, stop, 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 stop. He stops. I put an arrow in real fast. I draw back and I don't even, I don't have time to range. I just draw back and I let it fly. I said, it's 45 yards. It's gotta be close. Hit the Inyala. He runs about 60 yards and he expires right there. Guess what? It's the first Inyala we saw from the morning. And I don't know how some people feel about it, but I always feel like when you're hunting, you're part of the environment, you're part of eco, you're part of nature. And that one needed to go. And it was my turn to harvest an animal. And he was the one I was to harvest. Didn't matter how many hours we would have hunted that day. He was the one I was gonna end up with. So that ended our day at George. We got back, Mrs. Pawpaw was mad at me because we were now, because we shot him, we had to go clean him, take him down to the skin rack and get him turned into the taxidermist. So now we're an hour and a half late and everybody's waiting on us. I'm in trouble, I'm having a great time, but we get back and everybody's happy and we head off. And now we're gonna go down to, I call it Malibu, but it's down to Mossel Bay. It's like the Malibu of South Africa. Don't forget, hit the like, hit the subscribe, click the little bell dingy thingy and you will get notifications every time we post something new. Thanks for watching and have a great day, everybody. Appreciate you. I just want everybody to know this is the Hoyt RX-7 Ultra. It's got a tight spot quiver on it. It's got a Hamsky Epsilon rest on it. It's got a Spot Hog triple stack sight on it. It's got a Podium Archer stabilizer on it. It has got A3 strings on it. It is custom, it is ready, and it is set up. This one could be yours. If you go over and check out the boat giveaway video,